Hey there everyone, welcome to the video. Uh, I'm Mellow underscore Magikarp, and I'm going to be going over a little bit of my tips for how to qualify for the Players' Cup, and what I think are going to be the best things for you to do in order to uh, make it there. So for those of you who don't know, I'll have a link in the description to some of the information on the Players' Cup, because if you have your POP ID linked to your PTCGO account, you should have gotten some tournament keys. And the top 256 players from each region are going to get to compete in a double elimination bracket. And at the end, the top four from each region are going to get to compete in the finals, where the top four places get a travel stipend, which is super good. So first thing, because some of you might be asking, like, wait, why would I listen to you? Uh, I have been playing for two years, but I've had a decent amount of success in the two years. I'm not going to go over all of these. But I feel confident that I am a pretty good player. And because of that, I think that I can offer some good advice for how to be successful. Especially if you look at the bottom few, I have had success in the online tournament circuit. And I feel like I've gotten the PTCGO meta and how to do well in it. I got it down pretty well. And I did qualify for Players Cup 1. So my first tip is schedule time. This is actually kind of a big one that I think a lot of people are missing. So we have 50 tournament keys. That is 50 tournaments. <laughs> that is a lot of PTCGO. That's a lot of these little eight-man pods or eight-person pods. Uh, you have four weeks to complete them. That ends up being about 12 tournaments per week. It's technically, you know, 12 point whatever. But that's a lot. <laughs> that ends up being a couple a day. There's going to be days where you don't want to play. There's going to be days where you do want to play. So you really have to think, okay, when do I want to play the game? And when can I sit down for a significant amount of time? Uh, assuming you don't lose in the first round, these tournaments can take a while. You're talking 30, 45 minutes into the finals. Thankfully, this is a pretty fast format. But you really have to think about that. Don't start a tournament and then kind of remember like, oh yeah, I had to go run errands. I had to do that. Kind of sit down when you know, okay, I've got 45 minutes or an hour for sure, so I can finish this if I make it to the finals. Or if you sit down for an hour, you lose round one, you know for sure, hey, I can go into the next one. The other big thing is to pace yourself. So four weeks feels like a long time, but it will catch up on you. So this is where, uh, at my day job, I'm a high school teacher. I see this happen a lot with students when they have a deadline that's out in the distance. They're kind of like, yeah, I'll do a little bit here, a little bit there, and they don't actually schedule it out nicely. So you may be like, yeah, I'm going to do a few tournaments week one, maybe a couple week two. And then once we get to the end, suddenly you've got, you know, 30 tournaments to do in a week, or you've still got 20 something. That's a lot of time. That's, you know, if you're going to say 30 minutes, 20 tournaments in a week, that's 10 hours of the week. That's not an insignificant amount of time to play. So it's kind of a big deal to, okay, decide, you know, on Thursdays from this time to this time, you know, this three-hour block, I'm going to play some tournaments, and really kind of plan it out. It may not be fun, but think of it like a league challenge, which that's all it is. It's a bunch of league challenges. So think of it like, okay, you know, my league has a league challenge every Thursday or a league tournament every Thursday. I go there for three hours. Maybe that's when you're going to do your PTCGO tournaments. This also brings me into, make sure you try to play in all 50. You're probably going to be able to qualify without playing in all 50 of the tournaments, but there's no reason not to. So there's, unlike Player Cup 1, you do have to win round 1 in order to get points towards making it to the double elimination tournament. So if you have extra keys, you don't just enter and leave, like some people were doing for Players Cup 1 with you know, the people who had a bunch of extra tickets. You have to actually win that first round at least. So try your best to get all 50 of them in there, because it will help you out, and it will help the variance too. Because occasionally you're going to have a bad turn. That's okay. Try to pay attention. This is a pretty big one. We all play worse on PTCGO. I do when I'm streaming. I do when I'm sitting at home. It's just, it's not the same environment. The opponent's not across from me. You don't have the same feeling as you would at an IRL tournament. And so it's easy to get distracted. I've got the TV on. 
My cat comes over. I'm going to pet my cat. I got my phone right there. Let's see what's up on that. Oh, I got another tab. I've got the internet right there. Try your best to minimize these extra distractions. It will help you. The game is fun. There is absolutely no reason not to necessarily do this stuff, except you want to play your best. You've got time in between rounds to check your phone, to go on Twitter, to go on Instagram, whatever. Try your best when you're in the moment of the game to pay attention to that game. It's super easy to get distracted. Getting to the deck choices, bring a consistent deck. I mentioned earlier, it's kind of like a league tournament or a bunch of league challenges. That's all it is. That's all you have to do in order to qualify. Do well at a bunch of league tournaments, a bunch of three-round league tournaments. So I have a picture of Decidueye here on purpose. I am not going to be teching for Decidueye. I know some of you, that's exciting to hear. You're like, yo, he's telling people not to tech for Decidueye. But the fact is, there won't be a lot of Decidueye out there. And some decks already have a favorable Desi matchup. So things like that, things like, let's say, Sandaconda, you don't have to worry about those. You may run into them, for sure. But there's absolutely no reason to cut consistency cards at an unknown meta, because it's unknown. There's only eight people in the tournament, and you're one of them. So just bring something that does what it is supposed to do. Don't tech for things that aren't some of the big decks. Big decks being Eternatus, ADP, Luke Metal, Senna Scorch, Mewtwo. Those are fine to tech for. But the other stuff that, even if it's good, I would not suggest putting techs into your deck. And be prepared to play against anything. I am going to be bringing decks that are strong, consistent, and what they do is just good. So I mentioned Sandaconda earlier. I will not be playing Sandaconda. I don't anticipate I'm going to run into a bunch of Eternatus and Pikaram over and over and over again. So bring in a deck like Eternatus, ADP. These are just very powerful. And if people go on the ladder and they're like, hey, I really want to play my Spiritu deck, or I really want to play my Greedon de deck, or things like that, you can beat them because you know how powerful your deck is. Trust your testing is a big one. We've all fallen into the loop of like, oh, one bad result. Now I'm starting to doubt everything that I've done. Don't. 50 tournaments, about three games. Let's assume you make it to the finals every game. Three games, that's 150 games. If the first tournament you're out round one because you ran into some completely random deck that you were not expecting, that's okay. Don't let that skew your results. Don't let that skew your mentality to say, hmm. That sucked. Did your opponent draw everything they needed? Did Eternatus hit, you know, 270 plus multiple goons and nets and boss turn two? That happens. Just brush it off, move on to the next one. So those are the big things. Pay attention, bring consistent decks, and don't start changing decks and techs randomly. Just trust what you know. And I think that making the Players Cup should not be too difficult as long as you're doing these things. Don't metagame yourself and you'll be fine. If you are interested, uh, I will be streaming most of my tournament runs on Twitch, twitch.tv slash mellow underscore Magikarp. And Twitter, I'll be posting any updates on how I'm doing, any lists that I've got, and my DMs are open for anyone, so you should go ahead and drop a follow there. Sub to the channel as well. Uh, this YouTube channel is going to be used for a combination of Twitch VODs as well as some occasional YouTube exclusive content on this as well. So if you like what you see, go ahead and subscribe and thank you all for watching.